stuff like that. It, it, it was cool to open a record and pull the record out. There was all kinds of shit in there, and you know, then you go down to the, the cassettes, and then we went to CDs, and now it's all on, you know, it's all O's and ones on on the phone. And a lot of people are like, oh, I still buy my CDs; they sound better. I'm like, really? Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, really? Yeah. I'm like, is it just like, oh, you know, compression and digital, this and that. And that. I'm like, whatever. I can click on a song. I can. Like, just turn it up. You know, you can EQ it. EQ it there. I can EQ it the other place. Whatever, you know. But, you know, for the convenience of it and, and the speed at which you can make a new fan, you know, people don't talk about that. They, they, they don't talk about the upside. They always want to focus on the negative aspects of, of, of you know, downloading, taking music and stuff like that. I'm like, what about all the fans you're getting exposed to? You just let them have it. You know? Yeah. So... That's great. Was that part of the reason why you guys made it like a priority for a YouTube channel for the recording of Cold Day Memory? Yeah, you know, it's like, I mean, what I would have done 20 years ago to have that access to seeing Metallica make a record or Pantera make a record, you know I mean? The home videos are one thing, but to be able to actually kind of be a fly on the wall for even a few minutes a day is just, you know, it's easy to do, and it's kind of one of those things that you don't realize you know, what a difference it really does make when you finally do those things and how people follow them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you go on there and you're like, holy shit, look at all the motherfuckers that are beauties. It's kind of cool, you know. <laughs> you go on there and check around and just put new ones on. But, yeah, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, it's easy to forget about those things, but that's the way you make new fans, you know. Yeah. I mean, I remember back in the day, you got a box of cassettes, stack of flyers, we got a show. Standing out of the show, you're passing out flyers, passing out tapes. Like, yeah, man, I gave away 200 cassettes. You know, now you can put up a MySpace page, Facebook, whatever, and you can put a song on there, and you can have 100,000 people check it out. Oh, yeah. Like that. One you of those know, viral. It's that's the, the thing. That, yeah. So I think that, you know, the, the thing that we probably learned the most is the fact that you have to embrace it. You can't, you can't act like it's going to go away. That's great. You know, so... Um. Uh, you know, um, how much farther do you, uh, I mean, you know, and the other guys in the band, how, how far, how much farther do you guys see the, the band going? I don't know, man. I mean, kind of at this point, it's like, you know, until we just don't want to do music, you know, do this anymore. I mean, I think we're all musicians. We're all realistic. I mean, it's what we do. It's what we're good at. Um, but honestly, doing that acoustic tour kind of let us know that we can, sit on stools and do this until we're 70 if we really want yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that tour was one of the coolest tours ever because, you know, you walk off stage and like, I don't even have to take a shower. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, I'm ready to go. You know, but as long as we love to do it, as long as we still like making the music together, we'll do it. You know, and we haven't gotten to that point where, you know, where we don't like doing it. As long as it's still fun. As long as it's still fun, yeah. And, you know, I think it's just... You know, a new batch of good music, it always kind of inspires you to want to get out there and play, and vice versa. You know, it's it's just, I don't know, it's what we do. It's, it's what we really love yeah. to do. So. Well, the old saying goes, uh, you know, if, if you love what you do, it's not work. Yeah, it's play. That's true. Yeah. It's very true. Very true, yeah. Good point. Um, any, any plans to, to follow up that, that acoustic tour with maybe an acoustic album? You know, later on down the road? I think at some point we'll probably do both. We'll probably be doing a tour. Um, we'd like to do something kind of special, not quite like Southside, but something, you know, it'll be, it won't just be an, an acoustic evening with seven. That's going be something that's, that'll be a little bit deeper. I don't know if it'll be, you know, a bunch of new songs or a bunch of old songs redone. You know, I mean, we kind of did that on Southside, but I, we had so much fun doing that tour that it would be, you know, it would kind of be a shame not to, because we only did, I think, 12 or 14 dates on that one. Yeah. You know, that was just kind of a promotional, kind of kicking the whole season's album off. And, uh, you know, it was so cool, and people enjoyed it so much. We were like, well, shit, man, we should definitely take yeah. that out and yeah. do something again like that. So at some point in time, we'll definitely do it. I don't know if there'll be a record to go with it, um, only because, you know, I don't know if we're really going to need to be doing full length records much anymore. Sure. You know, I'd rather make make music a lot more often in much smaller batches and you know whether it be like an EP situation or whether it be a couple songs go up online I don't know how we're going to work it out but the whole model of you know shutting down for a year and going to make a record and you know putting all your time and effort into those you know 15, 18 songs and then whittling them down to 12 
I think that's a thing of the past. You know, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's efficient. I don't think it's cost effective. And honestly, it's the thing that kills us more than anything is when you do you know you, you narrow down those twelve songs. You know, even if you got a hit record, you know, on a big hit record, you're talking four or five songs. You're talking about you know seven or eight songs that are never going to see the light of day. They're just going along for the ride. And there's kind of no point in that, you know. I mean, we've got so many songs that we listen back to and go, man, that could have been a single, that could have been a single, that could have been a single. You know, so instead of trying to put a big pile of something together and then pick three or four best ones, I think we're going to make smaller piles and we're going to make them more often. You know, just change the business model around. Kind of like it used to happen back, I mean, back in the 50s. You know, Elvis has 140 gold records, all two songs at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd go and record a song and then a B-side and then he'd go out on tour. That was the single. What else did you need? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think we're going to try to get back into that mode. I think a lot of the smarter bands are ones who are doing those those kinds of things, you know. Um, you know, abandoning the album is, is probably one of the healthiest things that, that we can end up doing. Because the beauty of it is you go in, you do four or five songs, you pick the one that's the best out of that, you release it. If you have some success, you follow it up with another one. If you don't have any momentum after that, you know what? You didn't waste a year and a half recording, you know, 15, 18 songs. You only did those four or five. Yeah. I mean, you can do four or five songs in a couple of weeks. Like that, you know, in and out of the studio. If you're in a different mindset, you know, influenced by different things, got a different vibe, want to try different things, you can do it more often. So, you know, I think that's something that will definitely change for this band for sure. I don't know if it will be on the next album or whether it might be the acoustic thing that kind of you know, translates us from one thing into the next, but, you know. I'd be, yeah, I'd be, you know, up for seeing that, because... I mean, honestly, it, it's crazy to think about how much time and effort and money you put into, you know, making a full-length album and how expensive it really is when, I mean, you can go into the studio for a week and bang four or five songs out and not even, you know, not even realize that, I mean, you know, studio, in and out, boom, you know, send it to someone, have it mixed, and then book a tour. Yeah. Go out on the road, you know. I mean, if you're calling the shot and you're releasing singles, the record's just kind of going along for the ride too. Mm -hmm. Like that's almost not even necessary. You know, I mean, it's tough when you see, you know, the number one album, you know, selling less than two hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, you're like, all right, well, see, these just don't sell like they used to. You know, now it's based on. Uh, I know they're they're doing their projections now based on, you know, sold digitally. Yeah. Yeah, that's their main, that's their main well, the funny target. Thing is, is with that stuff, like a lot of the companies, what they'll do is they'll pay you for them, but they won't sound scan them. They won't give you a sound scan credit. So the whole sound scan, the whole gold and platinum record, that system is broken. You know, because they've got to figure out a way to, to, you know, to at least compensate for a lot of the downloading that's going on. Yeah, right. Because, I mean, even, even the legit sites, you know, the ones, whether it be Napster, iTunes, or wherever you're going to pay for it, Getting paid is the one thing, but then getting the credit, that's the other thing. Right. And the labels don't want to give you credit for it, because technically it's not an actual disc, disc that's scanned, you know. Either, either way, it's a fan buying our product. Right. You know? But at the end of the day, you know, you come into a place like this, and the promoter's looking at sound scan numbers. He's not looking at, you know, the total with iTunes and with all the others. You yeah, know? So, right. Yeah, it, it's just broken, and that's yeah. that, that's kind of why a lot of the artists are like, you know what, well, fuck it, we don't need the lights anyway. <laughs> All they're doing is getting in the way, you know. But, um, what uh, what do you feel will be your guys' lasting legacy? Lasting legacy on the music um, industry, or just on that man? I mean, honestly, I think we're. I don't know, you know, it, it's weird. It's like every time we release a record, you, you get a new, or, you know, batch of music or pile of music or EP or whatever we're going to call it. It's almost like you get a new, uh, you get a new crack at it, you know. Right. I mean, this time we debuted higher than we've ever debuted, you know, eight records in. You go, well, shit. I guess there's still, you know, there's still a lot of people who don't know who we are, you know. So our, our legacy, I think, is still, it's, uh, it's still kind of writing itself. Um, I like the fact that we were, you know, a band that had been around and been influenced by a lot of our heroes, you know, the Metallica, the Panteras, and the fact that we've, you know, seen a lot of bands come and go. Um, but I don't know, man. I, I think our legacy is uh, it's still writing itself out, so I think it's still a little too early to figure out, you know. 
We're only halfway to the Hall of Fame, so. <laughs> <laughs> you got some time. Got some time. <laughs> so, uh, well, then, how does it make you feel, you know, you know, today? Eight eight albums is a milestone. I don't care what anybody says. You don't see any modern bands release right. that many albums. That's true. And uh, so, how does it make you feel to see new fans, new younger fans showing up at your shows and singing not only your new songs but your classics as well. It's know. cool, man. I mean, you know, it, it never gets old hearing both sides of it. You know, the other night we did a meet and greet and I met one guy who was like, this is my 45th show. And I was like, holy shit, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> and then the next guy I met, he was like, this is my first show and I'm never missing another one. And I don't know which one I liked better, you know, because it was like, well, here's the guy who's been around since the beginning, but here's this brand new person who didn't know anything about our band, wearing a shirt, in the meet and greet, you know, a brand new fan. I'm like, all right, you know, I mean, it's cool, you know. I mean, every day you get to meet some new fans, and, and that's definitely a cool thing. But it's nice to see that we've got the people who've been, you know, oh, well, let me tell you about them, you know, when they were on their first record, back when they had the trampoline, <laughs> back when they were on Tattoo the Earth, you know, these people who want to, want to, you know, I mean, we're their band, and we've been their band for, right. you know, their whole lives, you know, since they grew up through high school and everything. But it's cool <laughs> when you meet the new people, too. It's like, wow, you know. It's about time. Thanks for finally checking us yeah. out. You know, <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool, man. I mean, it's, it's like, it, as long as we have both of those, I think we're going to be just fine. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to lose the old folks, but at the same time, it's nice to meet new folks, too. You know, you got to kind of have them all coexist in the same space. Pleasure meeting you. Absolutely, man. I thoroughly love that, man. Hey, very cool, man. You know, I've done a lot of interviews with artists over the past couple of years, and I 